Nine Lives is hands down the weirdest card in Corset 2021. Owners of fine luxury cardboard rectangles. I have to say, Core 2021 has been a very fun spoiler season so far. Now, as I said just a moment ago, this new card, Nine Lives, is the weirdest card in all of 2020. It might be the weirdest card put into standard for a while. There's just a number of things about the card that come together. You know what, let's let's take a look at the card and then I'll just explain myself because you're probably wondering. You probably think when you look at it first, you're like, no, this all makes sense. It's all good. So I'll break it down for you. Nine lives, two white and one for an enchantment that has hex proof. And it says, if a source would deal damage to you, prevent that damage and put an incarnation counter on nine lives. When there are nine or more incarnation counters on nine lives, exile it. And when nine lives leaves the battlefield, you lose the game. That's a, that is a pretty hefty statement. You don't see that on a lot of cards and it's a very gut punch impactful sort of wording. Just seeing you lose the game. Oh, the kind of stuff that makes you pull back and go, whoa, 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 wait, I don't like this. So. On the surface of it, what is this card? This is like a last ditch life extender, right? Now it doesn't stop like nine points of damage. It stops nine instances of damage. There's a difference. If you are familiar with like older magic cards, like Force Bubble, Force Bubble is another preventative style enchantment. This one's two white and two. And it says, if damage will be dealt to you, put that many depletion counters on force bubble instead. When there are four or more depletion counters on force bubble, sacrifice it at the end of turn, remove all depletion counters from the force bubble. So the concept with the force bubble is pretty straightforward. It is a protective sphere of magic that, in, that encapsulates, ensconces you, right? And will deflect enemy spells, whatever it is that was gonna hurt you. Doesn't matter if it's a spell, doesn't matter if it's creatures, but anytime you would take damage, instead you put that many counters on the bubble. But if it's not enough to get rid of the bubble, then the bubble heals at the end of the turn. So it's kind of like, uh, it's, a, it's a low level protective sphere where it can stop endless amounts of minor damage, but when there's a major instance of it, the bubble will save you, but the magic of it gets depleted in one go. And that's actually a really good feel for a spell. The flavor behind it is really straightforward. The art helps to communicate that effectively. You can see the sphere with like multiple green lines of crackling energy going off of it. And there's just the kind of the, the like this, the energy from it leaking outwards kind of indicating the damage that's been done to the force bubble. And at this point, it's not quite enough to stop it from um, still being intact. But either way, that's the kind of protective enchantment that we're dealing with. Now, nine lives can save you from a lot more damage than force bubble can. But force bubble does have does not have any kind of negative downside when it goes away. Like once you commit to this nine lives concept, you're you're in it. You know what I mean? If it's if this enchantment leaves the battlefield, that that means if it goes back to your hand, if it goes to your graveyard, if it gets exiled, any of those things happen, the game instantly ends. Now that well, I mean for you, if you're playing a multiplayer, they still continue to play. But regardless, this style of enchantment, this concept actually is something that belongs to the black part of the color pie. Now, obviously, as I've said in recent videos, they have been shifting around the color pie, and this is an example of it. Black has the spells that say, I'm going to give you a benefit, but there's like a dark underside to it. That's the idea, right? That's, that's how it works with like demon cards and other stuff like that, where it's like, yo, I'm gonna offer you something that will help you on your quest for power, but there is a cost that in some cases automatically has to be paid and in some cases will only be paid under particular circumstances. So that makes this not really feel like a white card, uh, a, like a black enchantment where it was like, 
mark of the like demon mark or something like that and it's like the demon will protect you x number of times and it's like the seventh time you call me your soul is mine so it'll protect you from like six instances of damage and then on the seventh time he stops it but claims your soul like that's the sort of feel that normally would accompany this kind of an ability right i mean not that black has a lot in the way of damage prevention but just to give you an idea of where this would normally fit more into the color pie now in terms of the actual protective ability of it that is very much white and it makes perfect sense in that regard we've had a number of different enchantments over the years that have been of this kind of protective nature none of them though have ever really ended your life the closest one really would be phyrexian unlife because phyrexian unlife says you don't lose the game for having less than zero life and changes you taking damage into poison counters if you're already at zero or less which is kind of it's it's a funky concept right where if you're at zero or less then any damage that's incoming turns into poison counters and you need 10 poison counters to lose so it treats it treats itself almost as having an extra nine life in the game and in a way yes phyrexian unlife will lead to you losing the game if you take 10 or more damage when it's out because poison counters mean you'll lose but there's nothing inherent to the unlife that will end your life versus the nine lives which straight up just ends your existence now from a flavor perspective this card is also weird so there's multiple layers for me where the card feels weird now this feels like a top-down design sort of in that they're trying to encapsulate a particular concept if you want a great example of top-down design that really gives you the feel of a card my favorite example is form of the dragon so top-down design if you don't know what that means that means start with the concept of a card and build the mechanics around that and in some cases you'll have things that don't feel like they fit into the color that you're making the card for but if it overall ties together and makes sense as a card for that color then it works and that's where we find form of the dragon so form of the dragon the concept of this is that you are literally turning yourself into a dragon essentially a five five flying dragon and you can see that illustrated by the abilities in the text box the first ability is at the beginning of your upkeep form of the dragon deals five damage to target creature or player that's you as a five five dragon getting to do your damage right at the end of your turn your life total becomes five that's your body conforming to having five toughness now in a way this does violate the color pie a little bit where red doesn't normally have life gain and if you're at less than five then you do gain life and you end up healing up like a creature would heal up at the end of each turn so again that enforces the flavor and then form of the dragon also says creatures that are flying can't attack you and that's because you're a dragon and you're flying so this is an amazing example of top-down design. And it seems like they tried to somewhat bring the same concept here, but it's really just, you know, cats have nine lives. So you look at the artwork and you see a cat who's, I don't I like playing, playing like they're part of the Lion King. I mean, look at the, the artwork. I find this artwork very jarring because in the previous one we looked at, it's form of the dragon. And this is, I guess, form of the cat. Like, it's not clear. Is that I are, are we turning into a cat? Is this magic that we have designed for ourselves to turn us into a cat? And so, like, basically, what happens if you read the text of the card? It says, if a source would deal damage to you, prevent the damage, and put an incarnation counter on nine lives. So each time you take damage, you're actually dying, no matter how much it is. And like having another soul version of yourself go up into the sky because there's eight there's eight cats shown in the sky and they're all like big like beefy lions and stuff like why why are they all gigantic felines and the main one shown here is just like a regular house cat what what is the idea behind this what are they trying to transmit that you You've devised magic that turns you into a cat, but makes you really weak so that a minimal amount of damage can destroy you, but then you get incarnated, and when your soul leaves your cat body, it turns into a symbol up in the sky? Like, what? 
what's the idea behind this? And if you devised this magic, like, why would you devise magic that you want magic that will protect you? But why would you devise magic that would turn you into a cat, make you weak and lock you into that existence with literally no escape from it? There is no way to survive this. Like once you turn yourself into a cat, this is irreversible. As a planeswalker who presumably would end up getting into numerous different battles with different individuals, that's the way of planeswalkers in most cases, it doesn't make any sense to have a spell that permanently locks you in to the form of a cat, because that's what this does. Why would you devise that as the last part of your spell? I mean, I get that mechanically they're using it to kind of balance off the power level of the card because otherwise it would just be pay three mana, stop damage nine times and lose the card. That's not much of a penalty. You know what I mean? I don't know, maybe do it in a way where when the card goes, all the damage, you know, keep track of all the damage it prevented. And when the card goes, all that damage slams into you or something like that. It just feels so very, very bizarre from a flavor perspective to devise a spell that makes multiple weak incarnations of yourself that can somehow take an infinite amount of damage or the tiniest amount of damage and still result in you being destroyed. And then ultimately you sacrifice your life for this like that. It just feels so weird to me like form of the dragon feels so right and i could see a foolhardy red mage who's willing to give up a bunch of their life for a time like they're willing to lose 75 percent of their vital life force to have the form of a dragon to fly through the skies and breathe fire and feel the existence this is just being a cat that's destined to die how is that epic how does it make sense the answer is it doesn't in terms of power level for the card, I I don't know. I mean, as a last ditch sort of thing, if you only need a turn or two to win the game, I guess, that's all right. But I don't know, man, it feels it feels pretty chancy. Yeah, they did give it hexproof, so it can't be easily targeted, but still, it just feels ah, it just feels dangerous and not worth the risk overall, but for me it's just jarring in how this feels like it should be a black card first of all but i would forgive that if the flavor of the whole thing tied together as well as the form of the dragon did right just like i forgive the life gain aspect of it so i look at it and go this card just sits it sits in a wrong place when i look at it my brain goes why is there a piece of magic art with a cat looking up at the sky with a bunch of like lion ancestors and stuff like what is this what it, like this this doesn't feel like magic art this doesn't, this doesn't feel like a magic card. That's, it, re it really doesn't. So, you know what, let me know what you guys think about this. This is gonna be obviously a particular opinion style one. You know, it's not like this is an objectively, this is objectively this, so anyhow, let me know what you think. Thanks for coming by, and I'll see you all very soon. Oh, and on a side note, if you didn't watch yesterday's Teferi Lore video, go check it out. There was a glitch on YouTube, a problem, where essentially I had to re-upload it. So it's sitting there ready to go. Fantastic video with really good editing. So go check it out and I will see you all soon.